Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. In this video, we are going to perform a conductometric titration of NaCl versus AgNO3. Here, this, this is a precipitation titration and this we are going to perform through conductometric titration, right? And in this manner, we are going to measure the normality of silver nitrate, right? Or vice versa, we can do. Now, here I am going to show you first the lab activity. But before showing the lab activity, I am just going to summarize what kind of instruments and glasswares we are required. So for this titration, we require glasswares, beaker, measuring flask, burette, conical flask and the chemicals required are NaCl, AgNO3, K2Cr2O7 as an indicator just to measure the concentration of NaCl by using this indicator method right this i have already made a video on this how to determine the concentration of agno3 by mohr's method i will give you the link of that video in the description box so today's temperature is 28.4 degrees centigrade now first i will wash the conductivity cell and the temperature probe with the help of deionized water and here you can see i am just going to wipe it off and then i and then I will wipe the temperature probe. Now I will take 30 ml of NaCl solution whose concentration is 0.0043 normal which is measured by weight of the NaCl simply. So 30 ml of NaCl I have taken in the beaker and now I am going to dip the conductivity cell and the temperature probe in the beaker. Here you can see Now you can see the conductivity bridge is dipped in the solution and it is placed at the center of the beaker. Now we are taking AgNO3 in the burette and the volume of the AgNO3 I have taken in the burette is up to 29. So this 29 will be equal to 0. Right, since I have prepared very less amount of AgNO3. And the initial reading of NaCl only is 0 0.602 millisiemens. Right, here you can see this is NaCl solution only and its conductivity reading is 0 0.600 millisiemens. And now we will start with the titration. And we have already taken the initial reading at 0 and the reading is 0 0.589. Here you can see the burette reading is 30 ml. So 30 minus 29. The volume consumed is 1 ml. It gives 0 0.587 millisiemens conductivity since the concentration is very very low up to now 30 minus 29 now i again add 1 ml of agno3 to this nacl solution and we are going to check the reading so here you can see this reading is decreasing 0 0.580 right and we continue this process of addition of agno3 Till we are not getting the minimum value and we once it starts increasing then we will continue up to certain extent and here you can see the white PPT of AgNO3. I have not added any of the indicator to this solution because they can also contribute towards the conductivity. So the reading is continuously decreasing. I will show you all the readings which I have taken through this process in the Excel sheet. Right? With the higher speed, I am just going to show you all the readings. So here is 0 0.34 and now I keep on adding and here you can see 0 0.527 reading. And I further added to 
this area no 3 and the volume reached 6 ml 35 minus 29 6 ml i have already added to this and here you can see reading increased conductivity reading increased right so now the reading starts increasing here you can see and i am going to add 2 3 ml more to this solution so that i can reach up to a maxima to draw the graph right now i am going to show you all the readings in the excel sheet which i have taken and the now final conductivity reading which i have taken is this much so here are the readings which you can see this is the volume of AgNO3 added to the solution of NaCl and these are the conductivity values and uh, you can ask if we started from 29 then how you can write down this 0 or 0 0.8 so i have written over here by subtracting v2 minus v1 right so 30 minus 29 i will get 1 ml so in this manner i have added all these volume and conductivity now how to draw the graph i am just going to show you that also here and here i have also kept the trend line into this but this is not actually the straight line beta spline must be there so select both the columns and once you select both the columns so the left column will be your x-axis and the right column will be your y-axis now go to insert now go to scatter choose these points so this kind of graph you will get now go to layouts and into layouts you can add the trend line so here for this purpose i have just used two period moving average and we can also have this more lines so moving average i have chosen for here and this kind of graph we will get so this is just to show you right that what kind of graph we are getting so it is going first down and then increasing now i am going to explain why it is going down and then increasing so sharply so the explanation for this we are going to see so here is the in the burette which we have filled agno3 and uh, and in the beaker we are having nacl right so this nacl on reaction with agno3 here i'm going to show you the reaction so this nacl on reaction with agno3 it forms agcl white ppt which i have shown you during the titration right and it also forms nano3 so the reaction takes place is this at equivalence point we are having this kind of situation i am going to explain it in the next slide but here i am just going to tell you on what values conductivity depends so broadly it depends on the concentration as well as on the ionic mobility since ionic mobility depends on several factors that i will describe in next of the video and here i have given or summarized the ionic mobility i am going to show you the concept behind the decrease of conductivity and the increase of conductivity values here so the explanation is given over here since in the beaker we are having the nacl and to this nacl we are going to add agno3 here you can see we are adding agno3 and as i shown you in the previous slide that the reaction is going on in this manner so here is the graph so initially the contribution towards the conductance value is just because of the Na plus and Cl minus. Here Na is given by the pink and the Cl minus is given by the dark blue color scheme. So this is the con conductance value just because of Na plus and Cl minus. Now as we are going to add our AgNO3 to this NaCl solution, this Ag reacts with the Cl and will gives the precipitate. If this gives the precipitate means no dissociation of AgCl. If no dissociation of AgCl means no Ag plus and Cl minus is there. So no carry, they cannot carry the charge if they are not dissociated in the solution, right? So this is the whole story. Now, as we are moving towards the equivalence point, the contribution at this equivalence point is just because of NaNO3 since no Ag and no Cl is there up to the equivalence point, right? So, this is contribution just because of NaNO3. Here the question comes, if NaCl contribution is this much, then why the contribution of NaNO3 going down? So I am going to that point but before I am just going to explain this graph. 
Now, as NaNO3 is formed within this solution, it remains there and it remains there in the Na plus and NO3 minus form. So, that will be shown here by this color scheme again. So, here you can ask if NaNO3 contribute this much conductance, then how the conductance value increases over here just because of this NaNO3? No, this is not the conductance value just only because of NaNO3 but the contributing factor is AgNO3 also. So here Ag and after the equivalence point since no Cl- is there to react with the silver plus Ag plus. So this Ag and further NO3 is dissociated in the solution of NaNO3 plus AgCl precipitates. So here four different type of ions are present. One is Na plus, the second one is NO3 minus and the third one is Ag plus. But if I just remove the Na plus, since Na plus is everywhere, so contribution to by this Na plus is there. But if suppose we eliminate that part, here you can see. So at this moment, you can see why this decrease occurs. Since Na is everywhere and its conductivity value is this much and this is the factor of this, right, with the unit. Now, Cl- minus decreases from the solution and NO3 introduced. So, so since uh, the conductivity value of NO3- minus is slightly lesser than the Cl-, minus, therefore there is a slight decrease observed here in this graph. And since after the equivalence point, we are further adding Ag plus and NO3 minus. So NO3 is two times here and Ag plus is also there along with the sodium plus ions. But I eliminated the sodium plus because it contributes everywhere. So here the mainly it is present over there just because of these ions, right? That is labeling effect of Na plus if we eliminate. And here you can see the conductance since the number of ions as I told you earlier the concentration increases the number of ions increases and therefore the conductance value increases. So here conductance value increases but one more point which I bring to your notice is that the due to the common ion effect of NO3 the dissociation is slightly lesser as compared to the initial one. So here uh, the conductance value is contributed by all these ions Na plus, Ag plus, NO3 minus and therefore it increases sharply after the equivalence point. I hope you understand the concept here and now we are just going to compare the graph. So graphs are like this and after extrapolating the lines we will get the value of the volume which is added at the equivalence point right and equivalence point we will get by the extrapolation of the lines like this right so after dropping in normal to this then we will get the volume added NaOH at the equivalence point or for neutralization of Ag and Cl for complete precipitation of Ag plus and Cl minus right and the calculation part, so calculation will be done by the equation N1V1 is equal to N2V2 and we are going to put the values of N1V1 and N2V2. Suppose this N1 is for NaCl and N2V2 is for AgNO3. So, so the concentration of NaCl is 0.0043 into volume taken is 30 ml and the volume consumed for this AgNO3 is 5.5 ml from this graph and N2 value is we have to calculate the normality of the AgNO3. If we multiply it by 79 then we will get the strength of the AgNO3 means gram per liter. So this is how we are going to calculate the concentration of AgNO3. I hope you understand the whole concept behind the titration and uh, you will find it useful. If you find it useful please like share and subscribe. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.